today I am going to introduce you to the counselling practicum. You have already gone through the modules on counselling. Number 2 the counselling process and strategies and module number 9 special concerns in counselling. In both these modules you have learnt about the counselling skills which are useful in dealing with children's problems. Now you have to do practical work in counselling. The handbook on practical work describes counselling practicum. It mentions the rationale and objectives of the counselling practicum. You have to practice counselling skills in real life situations. When you practice these skills in real life situations, you learn effectiveness as an interacting person. You also learn how to create positive climate for others where others grow and develop. It also helps you to become effective as a counsellor and grow within personally. So, this is counselling practicum friends. Now, uh, how counselling starts? First of all, when you begin counselling, you make the person sit comfortably. When you are doing counselling, you must maintain privacy because when others are present, the conversation and interaction changes completely. So, as far as possible, you should maintain privacy so that the client feels free to express himself. Not only that, he or she is also free to concentrate on what she is saying. Apart from that, the counselling, during counselling, you must maintain appropriate distance. The space is very important when especially with the individuals of other gender. You should maintain an appropriate space between you and the client so that they remain comfortable. Nonverbal gestures are very important when you are doing counselling. What do these nonverbal gestures involve? You should give appropriate eye contact to the other person. Now, what do we mean by appropriate eye contact? It should not be staring at the other person, but at the same time it should be comfortable and eye contact conveys warmth, interest and a comfort to the other person that you are interested in. You should be leaning a little towards the other person. You should maintain a comfortable, warm and pleasing tone when you are doing counselling. And above all, you have to attend verbally also to the other person. When you are doing all these things, you are creating a positive climate for the other person to feel relaxed and feel motivated to express himself or herself. Now, next step in counselling involves attending to what other person is saying. Friends, normally, we do not attend to others, we simply hear others. Now, what is the difference between hearing and listening? Hearing is we are hearing the other person, but already inside our minds noise starts. What is this noise? We are already formulating a reply to what the other person has said. When we are formulating a reply to the, what the other person has said, we are not paying attention to what he is trying to say. We are only listening to the part message. We are listening to what interests us or what we are understanding. And all on the basis of that little information, we are busy formulating a reply. This is what happens in our day to day interactions with others. But counselling is different. Here, we have to learn to stop that inner noise and concentrate on what the other person is saying. Habitually, we start formulating replies and we concentrate only on part messages. We have to learn to develop the skill of attending to the other person, listening to them completely, so that we understand what they are saying and respond appropriately to them and ask relevant questions so that when we are talking to them, we help them to explain themselves completely 
and adequately. When we help them to reflect on their problems, then they are able to think deeply about this problem.